Alrighty, Blizzard has announced that the War Within pre-patch releases on July 23rd. A uh, pretty big deal. Uh, you know, there's actually going to be a decent amount of new content, such as things such as the answering the call of the Radiant Echoes as the massive amount of pre-patch event. There's also going to be dynamic flying for a lot of old world dragon riding mounts, as opposed to just being able to dragon ride on, you know, current dragon riding mounts. Also, whenever Dragonfight Season 4 will close, Blizzard clarified that when Season 4 ends, it won't be possible to earn PvP seasonal rewards, titles, or Dragonflight Season 4 rankings. So things such as, you know... Things such as like rank one title for M plus, that kind of thing, is no longer going to be able to be rewarded. But for a time after the end of season four, most M plus achievements, Keystone Master, Keystone Hero, and rewards will remain earnable. So, you know, things such as like, you know, Fire Rack Mount, not going to go away immediately. Things like, you know, portals, M plus portals, not going to go away immediately. So those things are going to still be obtainable. Very specific season four ranking stuff also will be going away though. Um, as for the Radiant Echoes, basically what the Radiant Echoes are is like an old world event um, where you'll go around and you'll, you know, see a vision of the past. And whenever you're completing that vision of the past, then you get like a resource. You can buy some like catch up gear. It's basically for catch up gear for like alts and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Currency, residual memories, half forgotten memories can be glimpsed in light uh, playing across this iridescent power. In addition to that, The War Within goes live August 26th at 3pm PDT globally. Players who have purchased the app edition of War Within will be able to take part in early access beginning on the 22nd. Players still pretty con pretty controversial between all the players where not very many people are super happy that Blizzard's even doing an early access. Um, but if you get the Epic Edition of The War Within, you will be able to get that early access. Um, they did state at BlizzCon and, and numerous times after the fact there's not going to be any like end game rewards uh, that you're going to be able to get by you know buying the early access. So I will say that there is a couple of things in like kind of generally the content structure of how the beginning of the expansion isn't 100% clear, but I think that there's in general a pretty good idea. So first and foremost, uh, Heroic Week is back. So the first two weeks of the expansion, the only thing that's going to be available for end game content is going to be normal and heroic level dungeons. Um, they've removed the ability to be able to do M0 dungeons immediately. Uh, you know, it's just gonna be normal and heroic level dungeons. Then after that two week period is up, then the PVP season starts, M0 dungeons open up and heroic and normal raid open up. Uh, so that's kind of what normal heroic week returning means. Then the week after that, Mythic Raid opens up, M Plus opens up completely uncapped, and the PvP season's unchanged because that's how that's just going to be. So basically, and, and this was this was announced in an interview a while back, back in April even, where uh, you know the the heroic we were returning, Blizzard just decided that that was going to be a fundamentally better structure, and it makes sense. Although it is going to change how the beginning of the expansion works just a little bit, where instead of um, Instead of doing M zeros and stuff like that, having like a weekly lockout, you have queuable heroic dungeons that you're going to be doing for gear. And then there's also going to be open world content. You know, the profession system is available to level up. Uh, there's there's a bunch of different stuff. You know, reputation farming and stuff like that. That's always available on expansion launch. So uh, you can level a bunch of characters as well. It's all a bunch of stuff that's like that. But I mean, you know, Blizzard kind of reducing the amount of M plus grind for raiders and changing kind of the structure of how the beginning of the expansion works. In addition to that, other news this week. New abilities in Mist of Tyrion Scythe and Siege of Boral. So, so two, a lot of the returning dungeons end up having this phenomenon where they end up being a bit too easy. I'm not too surprised that this happens because first and foremost, there's like a knowledge gap that players have generally whenever you're coming into the season in the, in the returning dungeons. But also more often than not, the Dragonflight and War Within dungeons have this Dragonflightification thing that they like to do, where all of the trash has one or two mechanics on it, uh, or one or two very important mechanics on it. Whereas the old school dungeons don't necessarily have that, and so the old school dungeons have, you know, one trash mob per pack has an important mechanic on it, which is structurally a little bit better. But then you see things such as, you know, Mist of Tyrannosite being the easiest dungeon by a country mile on the beta Necrotic Wake, kind of being in a similar vein. And so instead of making the War Within dungeons a bit easier, uh, instead, 
Blizzard has elected to make Mist of Terran Scythe and Siege of Baralis slightly harder by adding more mechanics to the dungeons. Um, now, a lot of this is going to be to trash that's in the maze. And I actually have a, you know, I, I did a stream whenever I was actually like testing out the dungeon. So we can kind of look at so, some of the changes. First and foremost, this was a subtle change that they did a couple weeks back. The Stalker. Now, whenever you use a CC on the Stalker during its Mistvale Bite cast, it can't be stopped. Um, that's a change that they did to a lot of mobs in a lot of different dungeons. I know they did it to like Warlocks and Grim Batol. They've done it to a lot of mobs where you just can't throw a stop on them. Otherwise, they're going to recast. And so it, while delaying their cast sometimes can be good, it's not always the most useful thing. Um, and, and there's a lot of mobs now that require an interrupt as opposed to being able to throw a stop that was universal. And that's a, a bit of a jarring change. And it makes the dungeons a lot harder, I will say. Uh, it makes a lot of dungeons a lot more difficult. On top of that, the one of the primary mechanics that you see here are, are the changes to Miss Veiled Defenders. And you see this large circle that they have right here. Um, so first and foremost, whenever they drop the circle, it does a large amount of damage to people that are standing inside of the circle. But not only that, but the mobs that are standing inside the circle get this debuff that you can see right here. It looks like a Convoke the Spirits icon, and they take reduced damage. And this makes this area a lot harder. Um, it makes melee DPS have a, a bit of a harder time cont uh, contacting the mobs as well. And also, you'll see this defender casting an Expel cast. These defenders are now also CC immune. So you can't CC them at all. And whenever they cast Expel, you know what they're going to do. They're going to dash the player that's targeted, and they're going to do damage to them. And it's not a small amount of damage. It's like a medium amount of damage. And if they get comboed with Double Defender or Defender plus Stalker at the same time, they could potentially die. Like, it is, it is not a small amount of damage. And so these defenders got a decent amount more mechanics. Uh, they also reworked the uh, Forge Master boss in, in Grim Batol. I think to make it a, a bit of a more relevant encounter. I think that this was totally fine. They also changed the last boss of Grim Batol to have twice as many tentacles out at, at any given moment. It's a bit tough. Um, they, they did nerf the Warlocks, thank God, because the Warlocks were rough, very rough. But they also added some more mechanics to Siege of Browls. And you can see it on screen here. So in the past... And I would say that most of the changes that they did to Boralus were, I don't want to say positive, but Lockwood, instead of uh, retreating on a timer, on, on energy, basically, now Lockwood only retreats at 66 and 33%. This is very good, you know. I think that, in general, mo most bosses in M-plus should retreat at percentage HP thresholds, not on a timer, especially if they're becoming immune. But they now added a new ability to the intermission, where whenever Lockwood retreats, they... Lockwood does a similar mechanic to what's from the spotter. And again, this is another mechanic that is pretty annoying for melee DPS, I would say. Melee DPS are going to pretend like it's the end of the world and like they're being oppressed. But like it's, this, this one's actually pretty annoying because having to get off of the boss for an extended period of time or uh, because this boss is not really movable, it becomes pretty obnoxious. Uh, Blizzard, in my opinion, they need to go through and, and change structurally how the uh how, how the dungeon mechanics work i think that they i think that dungeons just in general have too many trash mechanics and players continue in time and time again to complain about just like this is too many trash mechanics you probably need to lower the amount of trash mechanics that we have available here uh, by by lowering the amount of trash mechanics that players have it's going to be a lot more you know reasonable in addition to that we got a new affix update um so first and foremost, Frenzied is gone. So the affix where that was completely passive, that mobs, whenever they were below 30% HP, did slightly more damage. It took a little bit more HP. It's completely gone. Uh, Blizzard states that we've heard feedback that this affix feels very less visible compared to Ascendant, and it's more punishing due to its passive nature without too much counterplay. I guess that's probably true. It also is less thematic compared to Ascendant, where Zalatap is present throughout the dungeon. I agree with that, though. I think that that's just 100% factual. So instead... They went with a an ability called Zalatath's Bargain Void Bound, and so you get a Void emissary to empower nearby enemies, gradually increasing their damage. Upon defeating the emissary, players harness the Void energy for themselves, increasing their critical strike chance by twenty percent for twenty seconds. And so, how this works is a Void emissary spawns. You have to do damage to a shield that the Void emissary has. Once you do enough damage to it, the Void emissary despawns, and then you get twenty percent critical strike for twenty seconds. Um, the shield, not that hard to break through. It's not the easiest thing to break through. You actually have to, to manually hit the mob, but it's not the end of the world. The mobs do get 5% increased damage every 
uh, every couple of seconds whenever the the void bound emissary is out and so it does make the mobs hit very hard um and you can see it on screen right here basically it starts casting this ability called dark prayer and the mobs start um taking you know stacks of this dark prayer cast and we'll start doing a little bit more damage um, let's see if i can get a clip of it whenever we're not wiping to a trash pack just so you guys can see what this looks like yeah so so it spawns relative to players location so it'll spawn nearby players or nearby mobs and you can see it on screen right here um, so we have to end up swapping to this Dark Prayer. It does take AoE damage, so things such as, you know, Starfall or whatever else uh, will hit it. It's not like a totem or something like that where AoE effects won't cleave it, like Blade Dance and whatnot. And then once you kill it, you get 20% crit for 20 seconds. Initially, it was purgeable. That was removed. It's no longer purgeable. Um, now you have to, like, uh, target it. New update for Ascendant. Ascendant is the Razgath style orbs that give you haste. They've reduced the amount of them from 20 to 10. It did feel a little bit overwhelming. So I think that reducing the number of the Ascendant Orbs makes sense. You, you know, your haste is going to be a little bit lower. But as a result, first off, it's going to be a lot easier to get all those Ascendant Orbs CC'd in one CC, such as like Sweeper, Typhoon, or Inkeper, or whatever. But also, it's going to be a lot less clutter. And I think that that was a major complaint, was that it was just like, well, it was just a lot of clutter. Not that the affix was necessarily bad. But it was a lot that was going on at the same time. And so reducing the number of orbs from 20 to 10 is cool. Um, all in all, that's all we've seen this week. We're getting ready for pre-patch. I think that pre-patch is soon. So we're going to have a little bit more content updates in the near future, talking about all the changes coming with pre-patch. In addition to that, class writers for the site are going to have their articles and class changes due on the 19th. And so then uh, the pre-patch update will be live whenever the uh, pre-patch is going to be live. So make sure to stay tuned if you're looking for any class guide related content as well on Wowhead. So stay tuned for that. And I hope to see you guys in next week's video. Goodbye.